recording this this loud on a Tuesday evening, but hey, there you go. Okay, I hope you're all having fun, because I am, so let's keep it moving. So our third and final evaluator this evening, we've had three terrific speeches, and our final evaluator is Peter Lane, um, and Peter will evaluate Anna's speech. So please put your hands together for Peter Lane. So I commend this evaluation to the house. Finally, I think we all agree that everyone at some point needs a mentor. I was very much impressed with the way, with the way Anna's delivery gave the strange situation this evening. It's sort of genuinely live scale encrusted boulder dash. But honestly, I think I could recommend that a better knock knock joke next time, one that doesn't make us all groan. And I commend Anna on her excellent execution, how assiduously, assiduously she covered all of her objectives. Now, I'll come on to my commends and recommends. Anna regaled us with tales of her experiences as a mentee. How this has helped her in her Toastmasters journey, especially the part where she took the time to describe her ideal breakfast. Tomatoes, beans, toast, jams, all on a big plate. The level of description, amazing. Though I can't remember whether she said she liked Marmite or not, but she did mention it. She engages us all with her skillful techniques, her tonal variety, her jokes and her smile. Anna has such a way with words. She exquisitely explained the differences between being mentored and coached. I particularly noted the use of the phrase, I had an epiphany, the moment when everything fell into place, uh, if, if I remembered that correctly. This speech made me think back to the people who made time for me, who took those times and and helped me start my life. I am, of course, now only 29, so I still take advice where I can get it. And I hope that I will also make the time for others in my future. So, everyone needs a mentor. Her personal objective is to keep the audience engaged through the speech and practice using tonal variety to emphasize certain points. The speech is titled, Everyone Needs a Mentor, a reflection on the difference between mentoring and coaching. And she tried to engage, and I think succeeded, the audience. When I was asked to evaluate Anna's speech, I was a little concerned as she's such a good speaker, could I find anything to recommend? Commending is going to be easy, I thought. You know, I guess I wasn't wrong. She took the gloves off. She laid down that gauntlet, picked it up, and she, and she ran with it, as I'm about to tell you. Fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, without further ado, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Peter. Well, wonderful. I don't think I've seen anyone take gloves off that quickly since OJ Simpson. Our second evaluator, uh, Nina, uh, evaluated Rebecca's speech, and we're all looking forward to her report. So give a warm welcome to Nina M. Wow, Rebecca, you have delivered an amazing speech today. So ambitious, so, so ambitious. Fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, we all know that Rebecca is young, beautiful, and intelligent. But we also have discovered today that on top of that, Rebecca has many talents. 
So Rebecca was working today on the leadership development pathway, and she was completing the project in planning and implementation. Now, we all know that Rebecca is amazing at planning. She has planned contests, club contests, area contests, district contests, many, many contests, but the most difficult ones, as she has explained, was planning the club contests. So there are a few things that we can all learn from Rebecca. And this is, first of all, how to write a successful speech. And Rebecca's speech today was a big success. It had all the right components, very assiduous. So, excellent structure. Rebecca used slides to convey her message. It had personal experience and examples and the audience could all relate to this message. The second thing that I like about Rebecca's speech is the wisdom that she has shared with us today. The story behind it takes a real planning to organize this type of change. And the advice that she gave us at the end. If it seems easy, you are doing something wrong. And this is where I come to the recommendations part. And believe me, it was very, very difficult and very tough to find recommendations for Rebecca. But one which I've noticed is that Rebecca was just drifting outside the screen. So we all know that, you know, this is this time of the night that we all get very uh, kind of, you know, uh, tired. And I could see Rebecca holding her head with her hands, with her shoulders, but Rebecca, next time, Try to be in the middle of the screen, you know, don't drift far. And then the second part was, we all know that Rebecca is right, but she kept repeating this word, am I right? Am I right? At the end of the sentences. So Rebecca maybe tried to refuse, you know, the, the amount of word, how many times you're using it. And thank you, Liz, for, uh, you know, you can include it in your report later on, I'm sure. So, Finally, uh, Rebecca had a personal objective, and the personal objective was to make sure that, you know, she makes this dry topic very interesting and keeps the momentum going throughout the speech. And this was the icing on the cake. Rebecca, I loved your dance at the end of the speech. The dance that you did, and, you know, the vocal variety that you used, almost like singing when you said, you know, if it is easy, then you're doing it wrong. If it is easy, am I right? You're doing it wrong. So I think, you know, maybe a small recommendation in here when you do that, you know, try to put, take the slides off so we can see you in full screen next time. But in conclusion, what an amazing speech you had. It was excellent. It had all the right components to make it excellent. The topic that you have chosen was interesting. Everybody could relate to it. And the entertainment at the end, oh my goodness, you know, I wish I could do it like you. So um, your speaking skills continue to improve. And, uh, you know, I, I continue to enjoy listening to all your speeches. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Nina. That was wonderful. It's, it's my pleasure, really, to invite our next, our first evaluator to the stage as Kevin Baggs. And Kevin will be evaluating John's speech. Uh, Valentine's Day just were, you know, came and gone recently. So I'll, I'll be interested to know if the bromance is still alive between these two. Uh, so fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, please have, join me in welcoming Kevin Baggs to the stage. Kevin. Thank you very much indeed. So in summary, John's speech was an excellent speech that I, I really enjoyed, and particularly the ending. My commendations to start with here was that um, John looked very confident when he first came on the stage, despite the clothing he was wearing. I mean, look at the clothes. It's ridiculous that he should come on doing an inspirational speech, not wearing a tie and a jacket. He's inspiring us, but not very much with his clothes, I'm sorry to say. Um, moving, uh, well, so moving uh, forwards, I, I, I commend him that he moved his face 
to and from the screen when he was making his points. So he was pushing his face forward and coming back on the very important points. And I really like that, John, the way you did that. That was a fantastic thing. His vocal variety was ex exceptionally good. I particularly liked it when he said, Lime scale is like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. My, my, my um, recommendations to John is, um, the first one was, it's great to have audience interaction. I really like the audience interaction that you did here, John. I thought, though, that it was a little bit rude when you cut Paul off in the middle of his speaking. Cut him off, and it was a bit rude. Um, so perhaps not do that mid-flow. We normally like to listen to Paul, even though he can drone on sometimes. But I like the, I did like the interaction with the audience, though. Um, it was a bit, it was quite assiduous. Um, the inspirational ending, though, I thought was, was really good. Um, when you finished up by saying, because uh, to remind you that the speech is actually entitled Skiing with Cricket Bats. Skiing with Cricket Bats is the actual title of the speech. Skiing with Cricket Bats. My choice, Kevin's choice, Skiing with Cricket Bats is his title. Um, so I like the fact that he finished his, his ending inspirationally with whether skiing or playing cricket, always think of how you affect others. I thought that was an excellent ending. I'll repeat that, John, because I remember you saying this. Whether skiing or playing cricket, always think of how you affect others. Um, a, a recommendation that I did remember is that actually John um, started his speech with his eyes down, maybe for 10 or 15, 20 seconds. There was the eye contact at the start wasn't really there. Um, but he did use the rule of three, but not as good as he should have done. The rule of three could have been used slightly better. Anyway, as, as I said, um, he, he's a master storyteller. John is a master storyteller, and we all agree this. And he used these stories throughout the, throughout the speech to make his point. So, I, so let's, let's, let's go. I'm meant to be doing it for four minutes here. I was expecting to do two minutes, but I've got to do four minutes just to be sure. So let me reiterate. When he said to me that his speech was entitled skiing with cricket bats i didn't know what to expect and i'm sure you all thought the same thing ski how can you ski with cricket bats but yet john demonstrated how you the title can intrigue you and it doesn't necessarily mean what it says and john had this amazing idea of how to bring us in he, he engaged the whole crowd particularly with his interaction i do feel sorry for paul um, when he cut across him but yeah i thought that john was um He's one of our best speakers, so you always expect such fantastic uh, use of language, you know, the, the rule of three and, and so on. So I'm not going to go on for four minutes. I'm sorry about this, this uh, our timekeeper. Well done, John. Good speech. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you very much. So we've had three terrific speeches uh, from Anna, Rebecca, and John. Yeah, these are the creme de la creme from East Heart's uh, speakers, so, so well done. And now we move into the evaluation section, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, okay, <laughs> that's a tricky one. Okay, um, we, move into <laughs> we move to the network break. I know I need a drink. Um, so 10 minutes on the clock and please get back for 8.56, maybe, maybe nine minutes. Let's try and get back on time. So probably see you at uh, 8.56, yeah? Nine minutes. See you. <laughs> oh, good. Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> this is crazy. But I have to say, I'm so impressed by everyone. So oh, impressed. wow. What a nightmare. It's quite disorientating, <laughs> isn't it? I think, I'm to think, oh, this is backwards. And, but it's very, very funny. Really funny. Yeah. And Liz, I think it's good because actually everyone has to listen so carefully. Mm. Yeah. and observe everything that's happening because you've got to think about, oh, that means now I've got to do this. And yeah. yeah. I think it's really good fun. Anyway. Oh dear. No, it's not the only one needing a drink. I'll be back in a moment. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have a bottle of wine. I'm going to have a glass of wine. <laughs>
I've never heard of anything like this. It's great. What's up? I missed the first day of the meeting. What's up with the board of this? It was you thrown in. You're supposed to use it as many times as you can and in place of any swear words. So I think it's been used very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one giving speeches. I'm so nerve wracking. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, but well done, everyone. That's been amazing. It's just been fun to listen. Mandy, Mandy, you did it so well. It was amazing. <laughs> Nikki, I like how you get your face on the slide. How have you managed to do that? So that it's transparent on your slide. It's amazing. It's supposed to be the other way around. I had to use a different computer, so I struggled. It's supposed to be at the back, so it's... Oh, I, I prefer it how you've got it. I think it's amazing. You're actually in the PowerPoint or in the slide. <laughs> it's supposed to be yeah, at the back and just in front, so... <laughs> it looks great, honestly. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed at Kevin Bags beat Liz Burnett for the best background. Good, I loved him. I loved him as just... I mean, how, how could the TARDIS not work? Chemist tabletop, it was great. Yeah, that, the TARDIS win. <laughs> oh, what a fun meeting. Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, I loved you going, Emma, looking in the filing cabinet and disappearing out the room. <laughs> You're lucky that I actually had, because normally for Zoom and any meeting at work, I'm only sort of decent from midriff up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, news cut, newscaster sort of outfits. And okay. lucky I had actually had some trousers on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a bit dodgy. Yeah. <laughs> oh.